Marriage could be starting next week in Alabama. Officials there are saying that they don't have to let gay and lesbian couples get married, but their reasoning isn't exactly what you would call true. The marriage equality backlash is getting dangerous in Oklahoma with a proposed new law that would hand new victims to ex-gay predators. And the National Organization for Marriage thinks that they'll have an impact on the 2016 presidential election. For the American Foundation for Equal Rights, I'm Matt Baum and welcome to Marriage News Watch for February 2nd, 2015. Well, there's less than one week left until a stay expires in Alabama, and then gay and lesbian couples can finally start getting married. The state has asked the 11th Circuit to extend that stay while they appeal, and the court will rule on that request sometime this week. They denied a similar request from Florida, but the Alabama case is a little different. One of those differences is just how intense anti-gay officials have been. Last week, Alabama Supreme Court Chief Justice Roy Moore said that he plans to defy any pro-equality ruling. Moore was actually removed from office once already in 2003 for violating a federal order about a Ten Commandments statue. But then he was reinstated by voters in 2012. Now he says he will again ignore federal court rulings that he just doesn't like. Mike Huckabee is making similar claims. Last week he started talking about overriding pro-equality rulings through a process known as nullification, which is when a state nullifies a federal law or ruling that they don't like. The thing about nullification is that it's not actually a thing. It's been floated as a legal theory for over 200 years, but it has never been upheld. The law is totally clear. When it comes to the U.S. Constitution, federal court's word is final. Huckabee and Moore know that, and they don't seriously believe that their claims can pass constitutional muster. These are just more tactics to intimidate gay and lesbian couples. In the meantime, two cases from Alabama are continuing to move forward. The state appealed the pro-equality ruling from two weeks ago, and now a judge has ruled that the ban is unconstitutional in a second federal case. Meanwhile, Alabama's only openly gay legislator, Representative Patricia Todd, has said that if elected officials continue to oppose marriage equality, then she'll reveal which ones of them are having extramarital affairs. It's hard to say whether that would be a good move or a bad move. On one hand, it sure would deepen the divide between the two sides, but it's also a handy reminder that while their side can engage in intimidation tactics, our side can too. Speaking of intimidation, Oklahoma State Rep Sally Kern withdrew a bill that would have allowed businesses to punish gay and lesbian couples by preventing them from doing business. But that's only because there are already a bunch of other bills in the works that would do essentially the same thing. Kern is still pushing something much worse, a bill that would give ex-gay predators access to more victims. Numerous states have already banned ex-gay abuse, but Kern's bill would be the first to protect it. Of course, every major medical organization in the country says that these practices are harmful, and a lot of this so-called therapy is actually just sexual assault, often of children. Kern's bill would not only protect these predators, but it would deliver new victims to them. This won't be the last we see of the anti-gay backlash to marriage equality because lawsuits are still moving ahead in multiple states. Just in the last week, cases advanced in Puerto Rico, Nebraska, Kansas, and Louisiana. And the National Organization for Marriage managed to get a little attention for a moment when they announced that they'll ask the 2016 presidential candidates to sign a pledge to oppose the freedom to marry. They were able to get a handful of signatures on a similar pledge in 2012, but their clout is dwindling by the day, so they may have more trouble getting an audience with serious candidates this time around. That is, if the organization even still exists by this time next year. Those are the headlines. Subscribe here on YouTube to stay up to date on all these stories. For the American Foundation for Equal Rights, I'm Matt Baum. Thanks for watching, and we'll see you next week.